we'll use our master page let's make another one for good measure so we have a default 2 and a default 3 what I will do is I'll create links on the master uh, page to go to all of them. So let's go on the master page. go into each of these pages and I will simply put in each of these pages a label and we'll call it label name then I will double click get to the code behind file or actually I'll go here to the code behind, code behind file and I will select the page load event Oops. and I will say So let's do the same thing on default 2. Let's go in. Drag another label on here. And then go to the code behind. And say label1.text equals session. username. Alright, so let's go and play around with this. So I'll go here. Actually, it's going to bring up default 2 because that was the page I was looking at. I actually wanted it to bring up the fall. No harm done, right? If the session variable hasn't been defined, it simply returns an empty string. So it doesn't like blow up if that isn't defined. But let's go to the home page and let's go and put in my name. 
and let's click remember. Okay, it remembered my name. I now go to page two and it remembers my name is Mike or I go to page three and it remembers my name is Mike. I type in another name. It remembers as I go from here to here to here. That's what I was going to ask is if you could change it once it's... Yeah. Yeah, is it? I mean, for for that for that purpose, yeah, it's just like a regular variable. You know, you can assign a value to it, and then you can change it. So stay until you leave it or blank it out or yep. at the end of the session. Yep. Now, um, what do I want to say here? In this example, I'm storing a string. All right, we can store strings, we can store numbers, we can store any kind of stuff. Um, typically what are called primitive variable types, like strings, numbers, dates, booleans, um, aren't particularly resource inten intensive, but if you store object references, because I could actually store an object reference in a session variable. I could create a, I don't know, person object, and then store an object reference to that in a session variable, and then I could refer to that um, throughout my app. But for the most part, we'll stick to simple things like this. Uh, they're less resource intensive. You kind of want to be careful about creating a session variable that contains an object. Um, you probably would be better off from a resource perspective to simply have that on the page and destroy and create it as you need, as opposed to having a session variable that's always going to remember that, that object. All right. Probably a better way to do this would be to put it on the master page, right? Because that will take place on, um, you know, the, it'll, it'll show that everywhere. So let's go into the master page and let's go into and create a label up here. All right, and let's go to the code behind. load and we can say label one dot text equals session username. Alright. So now when I run this pages. All right, so let's, let's show the two ways that we can destroy this session. Now, ordinarily, let's see if this is running IIS. This is actually the web server. Again, when we are testing our ASP.NET page, we're not accessing this web server. We're accessing actually the, the development server that's built um, as part of uh, Visual Studio. But this actually does have a full-blown uh, version of, um, of IIS. And let's see. Session state? Ah, here we go. There's a couple of different parameters. The session, by the way, that we're interested in is this one. And the default is set to 20 minutes for this. So I could go in and configure that and say, if 
five minutes if I wanted to, or if 20 minutes wasn't adequate, I could say, you know, 60 minutes. But that's the default. Uh, I can override that on a page-by-page -page basis. So that's where you would change it to change the default in IIS. On the page level, what I can do is... Let's go in here onto my default page and let's set the session timeout equal to one minute. Okay. This would be pretty harsh to do to your users. You better have some fast typing users if you're going to do this. But <laughs> since I don't want to sit around for 20 minutes to waiting for this to die, I'm going to set that to a minute. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start this up. I'm going to enter the name. I will entertain you with a musical number that I know takes at least a minute to perform. All right. Um, and then we will then look at the, um, uh, and see what happened. Yes? Is, uh, minutes the default on there? I, I believe the timeout is in minutes, yeah. Um, I, I guess I don't know that for a fact, but I I'm assuming it is. Yeah, if that's seconds or milliseconds, then, then we're in big trouble. Yeah, but I'm like, pretty yeah. sure it's minutes, because, you know, I can't possibly see why you would want to do that. Yes? So where can you go to see uh, Visual Studio's default? Well, we could do this. Let's, in fact, let's do this first. Let's do, let's put on this page, well, we could do it a couple ways. All right? In fact, let, let's, let's, let's do it this way. I'm going to go into debug mode for this. And then underneath there, I'm going to say session dot, oh, guess and sets the amount of time in minutes. Okay. So yeah, it is. All right. So I'm going to go run this. I type in my name. be formal. Click the button. I go into debug mode and it's now about to set the session timeout. One thing that you can do if you want, you can go into what's called a media window. All right? And you can put a question mark and the question mark saying, you know, print out the value of, of such and such. So I can say print session that timeout and I'll bet it would show me the default. And sure enough, the default for that development server is 20 minutes. That would have been what I would have guessed, but it's good to be able to prove it. So yeah, that's an attribute. It's created by default, and we can then go into here. We could actually display that on the page if we wanted to, put it, pop it in a label. But I thought it would be nice to show immediate mode. Because um, immediate mode allows you really to drill in and actually see really any of those system parameters that you don't really have control over, but you can see them that way. All right, let's let's go then and. So is that what you're setting when you do a timed test? Repeat that, please. When you do a timed online test, uh, are you setting a session's time? Is that is that what's controlled? Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, I, I don't you know I don't know the internals of that code, but I would guess. For example, I typically give a couple hours for for tests. Um, I would guess the normal session, uh, the normal session timeout is not a couple of hours. So the, they probably have a default value, probably the 20 minute one. All right, uh, and then probably once you fire up a test, it probably pulls from the database how long that is. You know how long the test is. It might give you a little bit of padding, right, so that the session doesn't die right at two hours if you're given two hours for the test. All right. And then it probably changes the default. That would be my guess, anyhow. All right, let's let's stop.
step through here, F11, F11. Now if I do question session timeout, it says one minute. Okay, so I've changed the session timeout to one minute. The clock's ticking now, right? And the clock's ticking now. Are you going to change outfits for your number? <laughs> I could I say I have a minute, so I'll either do one song or three songs by the Ramones. <laughs> Just make sure you get it on the camera. Yeah. Oh, darn it, I didn't bring a guitar today. <laughs> so I click on page two. Yeah, that reset the clock. All right. So that, you know, whatever it was, it, 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 you know, maybe I was at 40 seconds. Now I get a fresh minute. So let's look. It's 11.02 now, but I don't know how many seconds, so I'll wait until 11.04, and then I will uh, go to another page. What reset the, the timer? The fact that I made a request to the server. Oh, okay. All right, I clicked on a link to go to another page. That's a request to the server. So, eh, this guy's still alive, <laughs> right? This guy's still doing so stuff. So, he still has a minute. So he, still has a, he still has a minute to do the next thing. Exactly. The fact that I'm, I'm inactive, uh, from the, as far as the server knows, I could have shut down my machine. I could have closed out of this. I could have gone over to ESPN. I could be doing anything now. All it knows is I'm not sending any requests to you. All right? So it's sitting there waiting. Let's wait another. Still 11.03. Minutes a long time when you're just watching the clock. All right, there's a minute 04. It should be that when I click ref or when I go to another page, no longer remembers who I am. All right, because the session died. How how was it? Could you go over again how you got that up in the top right corner with who's in there and the login? Oh here? Yeah. Oh, that's just I, I just put just I just put a label on the master page. Right? I just went into the site master, and that the login button came for free. All right, that was part of the thing that it generated. I just popped a, an ASP dot uh, an ASP label here, and then in my code behind file was the login button uh, or login thing button is part of it is a toolbox. It, yeah, it's it's that that's part of what it generated, right? Okay. If you look at that, that's actually a link, I think. But yeah, that's, that's coded it generated. Now, let's go in. Now that we've seen how that goes, I don't want to be rushed and have to talk very fast, so I'm going to remove that line of code that sets it to a minute. That way it will be 20 minutes between requests. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a log off button to this. So I'm going to get rid of that session timeout in a minute. So now we we're back to having the full 20 minutes. And I'm going to add, on the default page, I'm going to add a log off button. So let's go to the default page. <coughs> Put a button over there. change the text of the button to forget. Give a nice little symmetry to our remember. These are the important things, right? I'll go here on my event and I will say session dot abandon. Abandon ship. That session is done. Alright? So, I go and run this. I let's be someone else. I'm Ken. I go around. I'm Ken. I'm Ken. I'm Ken. I'm Ken. I'm Ken. Let me forget who I am. I'm no longer Ken. No longer can, no longer can, no longer can. All 
right? So the session abandoned explicitly um, clobbered the session, even though I, I, I still had plenty of time in my request. But kill all variables. <coughs> so killed, killed all the session variables, correct. <laughs> uh, you'll even notice on some sites, some sites will say, when you are done, please log off. All right? Um, the reason they do that is, is, you know, you know when you're going home, right? You know when you're shutting down your computer. You know when you're going to ESPN. Therefore, if you explicitly clobber the session, that'll save the server having to remember who you are for the rest of your timeout period. So, you know, if you click, uh, if you click log off, boom, you're gone. Uh, it can get rid of anything it's storing about you. And, um, you know, um, it frees up resources on the server as opposed to leaving them hanging and, and just, uh, and just uh, um, waiting. Now, if I do a right mouse here, we can see one of the other things I talked about today, and that is a hidden field. Now, you'd have to be, only Bill Gates knows exactly what this means. But, safe to say that has something to do with managing the session. That has something to do with managing the session. I don't know, I guess we could probably Google it. Someone probably has a better explanation than that. But... I've made it this far in my life and, and <laughs> not known exactly what it did, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable saying, yeah, that's something to do with that, but eh, I'm okay with not knowing the details. Now, we can use session variables pretty much the way we'd use any other variable. You know, I mentioned about having a little counter that counted the number of times that we clicked a button. Now, let's go and do that. That seems like a fun thing to do. Go and add a button here. Let's add another label. If session <coughs> clicked equals an empty string. Then session clicked equals zero. And I can say session click equals session. plus one and then on the load event I can say label two dot text equals session clicked so let's run this Go to page two. Haven't clicked it before. Uh oh. Ah. Now, you gotta figure out a way to initialize. Do I need to initialize that? Let's see if that works.
So it's, it's telling out how many times I've clicked that button. I just, I, I, was, I was running into type difficulties with the way I had it, so I converted uh, the session variable to integer and see if it, it, it equaled zero. All right. Not particularly useful, but, um, you know, just showing another, another usage of it. Now, for your assignment, what you're going to need to do, and again, we're not going to spoil your fun, there are no spoilers, so I'm not going to tell you how to do this, but I will give the hint that it, it will involve session variables. For your last assignment, you're to create maintenance for the service table, service history table, and if you pick a service type, it should remember the last service type that you picked. So the next time through, it defaults the new um, to the service type that you picked. So you'll create, an, you'll create a custom ad form yourself. You won't use a grid view or details view. You'll then write the code that when you save a session, uh, I'm sorry, a service record, um, you will go and remember the last service code that you picked, and then the next time you go to add one in, you'll default the service code for that. The idea would be that something like, you know, if a, if a, uh, a car rental office manager was entering in the maintenance they've done, maybe they took a whole slew of cars in for oil changes. So they're just going to enter them in one after another, and it's going to remember what they picked um, when they go and do it. So, yes? Uh, a question. Uh, uh, when you do the sad maintenance, mm -hmm. do you only want to do uh, use what's already populated, or do you want to be able to create a new maintenance feature, like uh, you may have change oil or rotate tires? Oh yeah, um, yeah. Um, you just need to. You don't need to add to the list of available services. You just need to add that this car had this service on this so day. You just do a drop yeah. down. Yeah, you can do a drop down. You don't have to worry about adding a new service type. Yes. And it's just for that session, right? That, that default yes. selection? Yes. Yes. Depending on time, we, we might talk about cookies, but if I did want to remember that beyond that, I would I would pop that in a cookie and, and, and remember it that way. Is this the basis of all web analytics? What do you mean? These are the cookies and the, and the session variables and tracking things. You know, I don't know if I would say basis. I mean, yeah, it's a component uh, for that. Um, there, there's a lot of ways to get statistics. Um, statistics, though, can sort of be skewed. For example, you know, if, um, you know, one of, one of the measures might be something like uh, unique visitors to the site. Um, that it's kind of hard to tell because what if I actually <laughs> logged on from home and then logged on here from work? If it used my IP address to determine that, it would show me as two unique visitors. Uh, in fact, even if I, um, if I reset my router at home, I'd have a new IP address probably, and uh, it, it might show me as that. So, yeah, these things come into play. I, I'm not sure I would, I would go so far as to say the basis of it, but, but it has its role. Other questions? All right, let's wrap it up here, and uh, we'll go from there.